Greetings, it is I, Eamon. Welcome to I Want to Hack, weekly discussions of coding and spreadsheets. We're in a spreadsheet today, a Google Sheet, which is shared in the description below. Check it out, pull it up, make a copy. You can mess around with it. We're talking about lookup functions. So we have the lookup function, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is the new kid on the block, and it's pretty awesome. We'll show you why here in a sec. Uh, firstly, let me walk you through the spreadsheet. I have on the coffee data tab just a bunch of data about coffees. Uh, I have over here in my named ranges, I've named these ranges. So the whole table is all, I've got the coffees column and then I've got these different columns pertaining to the information about it. Then I've also got a horizontal um, data table. I just transposed this, I copied and pasted the stuff so we can look at the H lookup function. Um, this is the exact same data, and I've got these named ranges also. They're uh, rows instead of columns here. Uh, let's go back here to our main sheet, and uh, let's, ch let's chat about lookup. So what is lookup? Well, lookup is a way to look up data, just like all these other things. It's going to take a few arguments here. The first one that all of them have is a search key. So I'm using uh, this drop-down list as my search key. So I can put a different coffee here and it can pull up the notes, the price, all this stuff. Um, every one of these needs a search key. It needs to know what it's looking for. Then we need uh, a search range. Where is it going to go searching for that search key? In the case of lookup itself, we can do this in a couple of ways. We can do a search range and then have a search result. So that's what I'm using here. I am searching through the coffees and I'm looking for the taste notes. And then down here, I'm searching for the coffees and I'm looking for the price and then the popularity. And if you recall, the coffees, the search key, I'm looking through this column here. And then the popularity, I'm looking through that column. The price, I'm looking for that column. The roast, I'm looking through that column, etc. So it's going to find, boom, creme brulee, and then it's going to return the corresponding row from the popularity or roast level column. Pretty straightforward. Here's the drawback. This has to be sorted. So your data needs to be sorted for lookup to work properly. If it's not sorted, it will... Uh, it will produce problems. It's not going to turn up the right things. So I've got this in alphabetical order for the sake of this working properly. Uh, the next one we're going to look at, probably the one you've heard of the most, is VLOOKUP. So this is the same thing. We have a search key, then we have a range, and in this case our range is going to be the whole of that table. So if we go back here and we see all, this is that whole table. So I'm going to look for creme brulee again, and then how am I going to return one of these items? Well, uh, we give it an index value. So in this case, we've written five for the taste. And let's, since we keep saying creme brulee, let's go ahead and uh, switch to creme brulee. So we've got creme brulee. And our index here is five for the taste. Our index here is two for the price. Why I didn't put these in order, I don't know. But as you'll see over here, creme brulee, the index just corresponds to these columns. So index one would be the name of the column itself, the coffee column itself. Index two is the price, three, four, five. Index five is this tasting note, the um, one you see right there. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, in order to use VLOOKUP and in order for it to not cause you problems, in most cases, I've never not had to write false here. So this is the is sorted variable or, or argument rather. You're going to want to put false here. Um, our data is sorted, but in most cases, it's not going to be. Um, so I, I put false here. It should be false out of the gate. For some reason, they did not create the function uh, this way. So anyway, I always put false there, and that's how VLOOKUP works. HLOOKUP is horizontal lookup. It works exactly the same as VLOOKUP, only, as you might imagine, the difference is you're going to be looking across instead of uh, down. So we'll go over here to our horizontal data, and here we've got the names of the coffee going this way across the second row, and then our index is going to count from top to bottom, one, two, three, four, five, uh, just like we did before. So the only difference here is that you're going to want to make sure you 
uh, select the H all, which is that full horizontal table, the index being five, and same thing, false for is sorted. Ours is sorted, but in most cases it won't be. All right, so that's HLOOKUP. The other uh, kind of shortcoming of both HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP is that it will only uh, return an index that uh, it reads it from left to right. So you couldn't say uh, from the end to the start to search for it that way. It only goes left to right for VLOOKUP, top to bottom, start to finish for HLOOKUP. So that brings us to XLOOKUP, which to me is the better option here. It, it combines the best of both worlds. You don't have to specify whether it's a V or an HLOOKUP. It'll do both depending on the ranges you enter. It takes a search key and then a lookup range, uh, just like our previous examples. The lookup range, though, it needs to be a single column so or row if you're doing a horizontal lookup. So I've got the coffees entered there. Then you need to give it a result range. We saw a similar version of this in the regular lookup function. And in this case, I've given it that whole uh, table of the all named range. And then we've got optional values. So missing value means instead of that um, pound sign in A that it will display if it doesn't return a result automatically, you can write a nicer message that's more informative to your users if they don't find a value. Then we have match mode. This is the exact versus not exact match that we talked about with VLOOKUP. In this case, it defaults to exact. So we like that. And finally, there's a search mode. Same thing that we talked about with V and H lookup. You can specify if you want this to search start to end or end to start. And it defaults start to end, but you can change that here if you need to. The other thing to point out with X lookup is on all of these other ones, I had to write four different formulas or functions to display the taste, the price, the popularity, the roast level. Here, though, it's going to display all the values found within that result range. So I did my whole table, the all named range, and it is displaying the name, the price, popularity, roast level, and taste, everything. So it defaults to displaying the whole deal. If I wanted to pick and choose, I would have to narrow that result range down. I think this is more powerful. To me, it's the better option. It's much more versatile. As you'll see down here, you can use it horizontally in the exact same fashion. I'm just swapping out these ranges for the H coffee and H all named ranges to uh, bring in the same data from that horizontal data tab. Now you know a few ways to look up data, and I hope that you'll try out especially the new one, the X lookup function. I found it to be very helpful myself. Hope this has been an informative video for you. If you don't mind, please hit like and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm doing more videos like this. I'm shooting for a weekly cadence to release short tutorials on coding and spreadsheets every week this year. Hope you have a great one. You're awesome. Bye.